Sermon of His Holiness Pope Jacobus I on 15th Dominica after Pentecost, 1st September, 2024 Anno Domini, commemoration of the Feast of Saint Egidius, Saint Giles, Abbot, and the Feast of the Twelve Holy Brothers, Martyrs. Today is the 15th Dominica of the Pentecost. The epistle is taken from the Epistle of St. Paul to Galatians, chapter 5 and 6. Brethren, if we live in the Spirit, in the Spirit also let us walk. Let us not be made desirous of, of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, and if a man be preoccupied, preoccupied in any fault, you had you that are spiritual, instruct such an one in the spirit of leniency, lenity, considering thine own self, lest thou also be tempted, bear ye one another burdens, and so sh you shall fulfill the law of Christ. For if any man esteem himself to be something, whereas he is nothing, he seduceth himself. But let every one prove his own work, and so in himself only shall he have the glory, and not in another. For every one shall bear his own burden, and let him that be that is catechized in the word communicate to him that catechizeth him in all his goods. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what things a man shall sow, those also shall he reap. For he that soweth in his flesh, of the flesh also shall reap corruption. But he that soweth in the spirit, of the spirit shall reap life everlasting. And doing good does not fail, for in due time we shall reap not failing. Therefore, whilst we have time, let us work good to all, but especially to the domesticals of the faith. Please stand for today's gospel. Is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 7. At that time, Jesus went into a city that is called Naim, and there went with him his disciples and a very, and a very great multitude. And when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was carried forth, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a great multitude of the city with her, whom when our Lord had seen, being moved with mercy upon her, he said to her, Weep not. And he came near and touched the coffin, and that they carried it stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he gave him to his mother, and fear took them all. And they magnified God, saying, That a great prophet is risen among us and that God had visited his people. As part of the words of today's gospel, be seated. God has visited his people. In today's gospel, our Lord speaks of the, after the miracle, obviously, he shown mercy to all those by carrying it out in their spirit, because then the consequence of it is what they said, that God had visited his people because they understood that the great miracle took place and that no one but God can conduct it and that would do it, perform it. And that that such person has to be endowed with that power and that God do it, does it uh, through that person, not realizing yet fully that he himself is God himself, Christ our Lord. And then, therefore, when the mercy of God is shown when people are afflicted and all this. The, 
main thing has to be present. And what is it? The Catholic faith. Otherwise, there's no mercy of God. There's only punishment for heresy. And so those who count themselves to be blessed in all these things that they possess, or those who think that they are on safe ground, they stand on safe ground, when they proclaim that they are Catholic, they are mistaken. Because not what the man thinks that he believes, but what God has revealed and what his church teaches, that must be believed in order to be Catholic. And outside that, there's no salvation. Everyone who is a, her who is a heretic, apostate, and infidel, ends up without any exception in hell after the death of the body. And so then, when the people proclaim by that proclamation that a great prophet is risen among us and that God has visited his people, that's an illustration that they didn't understand fully yet. Yet they understood that a great miracle took place when the dead man was risen back to life by the power of God, by our Christ, our Lord. And so that the mercy of God is based on the will of God and his design as it is, and not on anyone else. And when God sees the necessity of it, he will perform the miracles. But when he sees that people don't pay attention, on then day he foresees that they will not honor him and glorify him for that what he has done for them. In this particular example in today's gospel, that is to raise somebody from, from death back to life, and that the people see it, and therefore they will glorify him and be thankful and grateful. But when people, even if they are like it is in today's times, even if they would see the miracle, and here the doctrine of salvation us from this holy apostolic see of Rome in exile from our person as the rightful sovereign pontiff. Here the doctrine of salvation, yes, they did disregard it and continue going in frequent places and assemblies of heretics. In that case, how they expect that God will perform anything for them? That is impossible. Only the punishment that will come, yes for an obstinate refusal to submit to the authority of the church and to be with those who are her enemies. That God will supply him with. And then they will hear his voice in those punishments. But those who are and strive to be true Catholic or become, want to become true Catholic, God will help them, but they have to show that sign of conversion and willingness to be true Catholic. And because precisely God sees or foresees how they will be in his presence, that even if he uh, have done, performed miracles, they would still go back to what they were before and they would not submit fully to his church because that their own inclinations of the flesh and what they believed before will contradict it. And obviously they don't want to submit to something that they are not comfortable with it because the comfort of their own deceit is more alluring and more leading towards that error as the devil forces them into it to begin with. Then such people obviously will not be helped by God because he foresees all that in, it, in his own infinite wisdom and power, divine power of God. And so those who neglect to be truly Catholic and who think that they can just manage without it, they, will, they are mistaken. And that they think that they will dictate to the church how it is to be Catholic, they are again mistaken because the divine institution of the Roman Catholic Church is not being dictated by anyone but directed and guided and protected by God himself. That's why we are divine institution, not human institution. That's the common mistake of heretics, because they took the supernatural away from God and proclaimed their own falsehoods, heresies, inventions, a spiritual nightmare ruin. And then it ends up that they learn the hard way from God himself the consequences of their errors. 
and rightfully so, because they claim to know better than his church. And they contradict the church in her teachings, in follow doctrine. And then they think that they can still stand. They contradict the judgments of the church, of the sovereign pontiff. And then they are surprised when the punishment comes and they are outside the church on their own, on their own afflicted, and when it comes, also punished by God. Because professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and have fallen into their own errors, invented and prepared for them by their master, the devil. Because that's, that's where they end up. All heretics are in the hands of the devil. He is their master, the tyrant, and there is no escaping his hands. And it's a truly test part of the punishment, divine punishment, of their obstinate refusal of submitting, of otherwise submitting to the Holy Mother Church, to the authority of the Church. And of course, those who neglect to learn the truth and to make the proper distinction of what is, uh, where the true Catholic Church is, and therefore grant the name, holy name of Catholic to a non-Catholic sect sitting in the, in the stolen Vatican, and conducting yourself in that scandalous and horrifying abominable manner with all the heretical falsehoods and fabrications and fraudulent ceremonies that are not sacraments, semi-Protestant religion that has nothing to do with Catholic tradition, then such people will regret it one day because God will draw the line and make them pay for it. And so they don't like our sermons and they don't like the truth because they are more comfortable in their errors and heretical lies of Satan. And so for such people, God will not perform such miracles because they were not humble enough. They were not willing to admit their own errors and their own falsehoods and their own false beliefs and heretical publications that they invent and believe. They don't have, in other words, the humility to submit and humility to admit that they were wrong and they are wrong. And such people God will not help and he will punish them in the end. But in this, our example today in the Holy Gospel, it is evident that those people were sorrowful enough and that the mercy of God was carried out for that purpose that not only that the carnal restoration to life took place, but also the spiritual rebirth of that soul of the mother and also of the son, as most certainly took place, that they saw how stupendous, how extraordinary miracle it was to, to bring someone back to life from death at his funeral, and that the, those who saw it, who were witnesses to it, were also converted, those who were steadfast and God helped them to convert. And then they were, therefore, witnesses of the greatness of God and that's how it is. By comparison to what it is today in this world, God is not performing miracles except in protecting the church, obviously, but, that's, but not those uh, visible miracles like recorded in today's gospel. But that doesn't mean that they are not going to happen. It's just that God is not performing them among those who will not see them and act upon them and do what is required of them, what God expects them to do on their part. And no matter how much they think they are Catholic or how much they claim to be Catholic, it doesn't make any difference. It's how they appear in front of God what they are in front of God. That's what counts. Because all of us will be judged for our works and none of us for what, how much we believe or not believe. But for our works, what the outcome of our actions and beliefs are. Whether they are offensive to God and or pleasing to God. That's the question between the life and death of the soul. So then those who hear this our sermon today 
um, voice our publications in which we condemn the horrifying scandals and teachings and publicate the heresies and so forth of the heretics that are excommunicated by a decree, decree especially from 2021, of excommunication where they are named with Andrews and so forth. And some of them died since then and are paying for their heresies in hell. And when they neglect, people neglect to observe the doctrine that the money is, in the, is published by this holy apostolic see. What can be said to such people? You had your chance and you rejected it and God will require payment. And those who neglect to convert and take that opportunity that God sends them in the proper doctrine and so forth and to learn the true catechism and to be reconciled with the church and brought for the first time in their lives into the bosom of the church for the safety of their soul. Instead, they go to their own inclinations and continue in them, wallowing in the mire of sin, severed from the chance of salvation and safely only on the path to hell. That's the, that's the situation, deplorable situation, tragic situation of today's world, including those who dare to say they are Catholic. It is a sad state of affairs, but that's the consequence of sin. God permitted this to happen to this world because of sin, because the sinful conduct, immorality, wickedness, selfishness, lack of charity, lack of hospitality, all these vices are so prevalent today and so extraordinary, in such an extraordinary measure implied and, and imposed upon the world and the world accepts them and keeps them and professes them and cherishes them instead of striving on this, of the sanctity of the soul and then those who claim to be Catholic they neglect to learn to be truly Catholic and matter of curiosity is sufficient for them to watch our sermons out of curiosity who is this that speaks to them instead of realizing what is said and how we admonish them to, to strive after perfection to be truly Catholic for the sake of their soul, of their eternal salvation. And that through listening to heretics who are always allowed by God to fall in one way or another during their fabricated proclamations and teachings. And how to listen to them is mortally sinful. It's like listen to the, listening to the devil himself because that's who speaks through the mouths of heretics. That is the devil himself, disseminating his false doctrines and heretic publications and lies that lead nowhere else but to hell. So the choice between heaven and hell is yours. God has the consequences. The human free will is allowed to function, but God has the consequences of what you choose. And not like the, what the people look like, what they, they were like at that time as it is recorded in today's gospel, when they were truly grateful by saying that God had visited his people. Unlike then, today, the, 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 such people are nearly extinct. And they are ungrateful to our Lord for redeeming them from the tyranny of the devil on the cross of Calvary, a horrible death our Lord suffered and fun and truly the, the pain, suffering, how much he suffered, also knowing how many, for knowing how many will be grateful and how many will be not. That of itself was a suffering enough too. That God himself comes and redeems the human race fallen by then and loaded with sins. And now, in today's time, the human race is so neglectful and so ungrateful to God for all that he, he has done for them. Even those who are shown the mercy of God and shown the truth of salvation, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition. And not realizing that the main part of their being truly Catholic is the supernatural power of the sacraments 
including the holy sacrifice of the mass, which the heretics don't have valid. They don't realize it until it's too late, or they neglect to learn it until it is truly too late. And then God will speak to them in action of their punishment. But they also will be converted, and let us hope and pray that it will be more and more. They will be helped by the authority of the church, by our duty of, towards our apostolic office of the sovereign pontiff, the rightful sovereign pontiff, according to the election of God. It will help as much as we are able to, and our physical constitution allows us to. But that conversion from heresy is a gift of God, and that those who neglect to be truly Catholic, they will not obtain it. Because God foresees that they are not willing to submit to his church, and they think that they know better, and then they fall into the hands of the devil, and God will not help them to be freed of him because precisely of that offense. And they remain deaf and blind to the truth of salvation that the church teaches. And that's no one else is fault but theirs. But they also will hear the truth and build upon it, bring good fruits, good fruits to God as the good trees they will become by the mercy of God. They will be helped by his church and continue professing the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, and continue the church. No matter how very few they are, the church will continue. But those who are outside, which includes all the heretical assemblies and the nobles of the apostate sect, they will be sorry that they were ever born when God visits them with the punishment for their obstinate refusal of the truth of salvation and refuse of the authority of his church, the Roman Catholic Church, divine institution, represented solely and only today, as all else are heretics, by this holy apostolic see of Rome in exile, and our person as the right of sovereign bond. And those who don't believe it, and so much so worse, it will be for them. And let us hope that there will be conversions but it's up to our Lord what he will do with them as he has chosen to bring a man that died back to life by a miracle so he can bring back to life of the soul those who, went, who had gone astray or were brought up in a Catholic religion that has the audacity, abominable audacity to call itself Catholic. That should suffice. For our sermon today. Amen. Amen. Benedictio Dei Omnipotentium, Pater, et Spiritus, et Spiritus Sanctus, descendant super vos, et monat semper. Amen.